the psalm had it this evening. What God wants is an open ear, somebody who's prepared to listen like the prophets were. Um, that's the attitude we must have. And St. Paul, writing to the um, young bishop, Timothy, says, all scripture is inspired by God and it is useful for teaching, for refuting error, for guiding people's lives and teaching us how to be holy. In that regard, I heard the beautiful thing one time uh, from one of our own Carmelite missionaries, Irish, who was sent to India to teach sacred scripture in a seminary there. And while he was there, one of the local priests brought him to visit Mother Teresa of Calcutta, blessed Mother Teresa now of Calcutta. And when he got to her place, it was crowded with the sick, the poor, the destitute, the dying. And all the sisters, including Mother Teresa, were very busy. But when he went to where she was, she was washing a leper. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a leper. I've seen leprosy in Africa. And this poor creature, deformed and disfigured, um, beginning to decompose while he was still alive, you could say. She was washing him and looking after him. And she, when she was finished, she came over to the two priests and she welcomed the Irish man to India and she says, why are you here? And he said, I have come to teach scripture in the seminary. And she caught his arm and she said, oh, she said, that's wonderful because we need that for this. Pointing to the poor creature in the bed. We need that scripture for this. See, sacred scripture isn't just good advice. It isn't just beautiful thoughts. It's the living word of God. Christ is present in his word. So if we are open to it, it's like a seed, a seed that has limitless vitality. Never know, never know what good uh, will bear fruit if we're open to God's word. We see it in the life of many saints. The great example might be Saint Augustine, who took up the scriptures and opened something and it changed his life almost in an instant because he saw himself in, in the mirror of sacred scripture and he looked at himself and he saw how ugly he was and how deformed he was because he saw the standards of sacred scripture. But it's more than giving us high standards and noble words and noble ideas. The Lord is present in us. So just as we receive the blessed Eucharist, we expect the Lord will change us, heal us, touch us, transform us in some way. Excuse me. It's the same with God's word. It's exactly the same with God's word. That is why St. Paul can say to Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God and it is useful for teaching, refuting error, for guiding people's lives and for teaching us how to be holy. The great prophet Isaiah uh, says, and it's one of these lovely phrases like the one in Jeremiah, um, when your word came, I devoured them. Isaiah says, quoting the Lord, my eyes are drawn to the person of humble and contrite spirit who trembles at my word. Who trembles at my word. In other words, my eyes are drawn to the person who is deeply moved by what I'm saying. Christ is present in his words. 
Finally, just to refer to our readings here tonight, um, you may have noticed that these two readings, we heard them recently, uh, they were on the fourth Sunday of the year, and it's the year, as you know, of St. Matthew, year one. It's interesting, very interesting, to see where this reading, this gospel comes in this year. Because year, on, on the first Sunday, the baptism, we had God the Father saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The second Sunday, we had John the Baptist giving his witness. He said, look, there is the Lamb of God, pointing him out to his disciples, and they followed Jesus. The third Sunday, we saw Jesus beginning to pick his disciples, looking around, people like ourselves, and he's selecting, I want you and you, and maybe you back there. And then we come into the fourth Sunday, which we had here tonight. The first time he speaks in the Gospel of St. Matthew, in the liturgy of this year. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the gentle, the merciful, the peacemakers, those who hunger and thirst for what is right, and so on. Mahatma Gandhi, who knew the Gospels very well and who loved reading the Gospels, he said that there was nothing in any religion to compare with what we call the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. And the following Sunday, incidentally, the, the next Sunday was, if you remember, uh, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Well, I can tell you this much, we cannot be salt or light unless we have the spirit, the spirit at least, of the Beatitudes in our hearts. We can't be salt or light to anybody or anything unless we have those standards. The heart of the preaching of Jesus is in the is in the Sermon on the Mount, and the heart of the Sermon on the Mount is the Beatitudes. And just to use that word, that's what they are. Be attitudes, attitudes of being. Not so much telling us what to do as telling us how to be. And if we have these attitudes, well then, well then, uh, the rest will follow. The first reading tonight uh, from the prophet Zephaniah, who lived just before Jeremiah, at a time of great religious and, and social upheaval, he said, seek humility, seek integrity, and so on. The same message as the gospel tonight. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit is a person who realizes his or her own helplessness and inadequacy in spite of all our, our gifts and places their trust in God alone, alone. And of course, the only person that did that fully was our Blessed Lady. Because she listened to such an extent that she became the mother of God. The Word became flesh through her in her and through her. Mary at the Annunciation was Mary all the time, before and after. Jesus praised her, not so much because she was his mother, because she heard the word of God and kept it. That was her greatest, her greatest achievement, that she heard God's word and kept it. A great saint said about our Lady, that she conceived the Lord in her mind long before she conceived him in her body because she was always listening to God's words and the word became flesh through her. And you and I, my dear friends, that's what we're uh, trying to do too, to make God's word become flesh in our lives in our world, in our society. There is no other way it can become flesh. 
except through us. So this evening, let us make our own the great little prayer of the prophet Samuel. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And thank you for listening to me here tonight. God bless you.